Hi there, and welcome back to The Katherine James Show, where we come together to upscale our thinking, up-level our game, and learn to move from stuck to sensational. On this show, we talk about all aspects of life. And this week, I wanna talk to you about taking back your control. So often I speak with people and I hear the terms overwhelmed and worried. And what I found for both of these terms to hold true is that they create a sense or a feeling of either lack of control or little control. This week, I thought about how easily we unconsciously give away our control when I caught myself in the midst of a statement as I said, I am waiting for, and I stopped and thought, waiting? Why are you waiting? You see, when we stop and wait for someone else to do something in our lives, we're essentially relinquishing our control. So this week, I want to give you five tips on how to take back control. Tip number one, do not wait for others. <laughs> you see, when I was in that mindset of waiting, I also found myself worrying, wondering, what if the, she doesn't call? What if the opportunity doesn't come through? But when I shifted from a mindset of waiting to a mindset of taking action, I began to implement some steps to create other opportunities. I began to create some other things in my life to take me away from a place of worry. And I not only found that I was no longer worried, but I also found that I really felt like I was in control and I felt more empowered. So tip number one, do not wait for others. Tip number two, remove clutter. Now you wanna remove clutter from both your physical space as well as your mental space. Your physical space, removing clutter, that's pretty self-explanatory, but you may be wondering, how do I remove clutter from my mental space? And I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Not long ago, there was a term that was always thrown around, garbage in, garbage out. This still holds true. Garbage in, garbage out. How do you remove the mental clutter? It's about what you're allowing to go into your mind. So you have to be careful. You wanna watch what you listen to. You wanna watch what you're watching on television, and you wanna watch how you spend your time, who you're spending your time with. Why? Because garbage in, garbage out, and that garbage that's going in is the clutter that you must remove. Not long ago, I heard Mel Robbins say, negativity is not allowed in her space. And I remember I got so excited because that's how I feel. There is no room for negativity in my space. So I'm watching. Yes, there is no negative music, no negative television, and no negative people. <laughs> I need to say that one again. No negative people. So we have to remove the clutter, remove the clutter from both our mental space, most importantly, and remove the clutter from our physical space. Tip number three, is face fear. I cannot tell you the number of times I have walked away with regret. The number of times I have not spoken up when I felt I should have. The number of times where I did not step up to take opportunities that were presented before me simply because of fear. What we know is that oftentimes that thing that we fear never comes to pass. <laughs> what we also know is that usually the greatest reward is on the other side of fear. So tip number three is face fear. Tip number four is make self-care your number one priority. That I love. <laughs> As women, we are notorious for putting ourselves on the back burner, for doing for everyone else and putting us pushing us aside and saying, we'll get to us later. No, we have to make ourselves our number one priority. When you do not fill yourself up, you will eventually become empty. If you're empty, you cannot give to anyone else. Simple, you can't make a withdrawal from a bank account that says zero. So if you're not filling yourself up, if you're not taking care of yourself, you will eventually hit zero. So make 
self-care your number one priority. Tip number five, you simply want to define control. What does control mean to you? What it means to me may not be the same as what it means to you. So you have to take time, analyze your life, look at where you are and decide, do I need control over everything or do I need control in just specific areas of my life? Maybe you only need control over the financial arena of your life. Maybe you only need control over the physical arena, arena of your life. Where do you need control? Define your control. So there we have it, our five tips on how to gain control or take control back. So tip number one was do not wait on others. Listen, everything you need to fulfill your God-given purpose, you have already been equipped with. Tip number two, remove the clutter. Remove the clutter from your physical space and most importantly, remove the clutter from your mental space. And if I have to reiterate, remove negative people. <laughs> Tip number three, face fear. Decide that you are going to face fear at every opportunity. You're gonna fight, face fear every chance you get. And remember your greatest reward is on the other side of fear. Tip number four, practice self-care. You see, when you take care of yourself, when you make appointments with yourself and you keep those appointments, you're telling yourself, I'm special. <laughs> Not only that, it builds your confidence and it builds your self-esteem and it builds you up so that you can give more to others. Practice self-care. And then tip number five, define control. What does it look like for you? What areas of your life do you need or want to gain more control? So there you have it, five tips on how to take back your control. Now, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you have taken away something that you found to be very beneficial or helpful and believe that it'll be helpful to someone you know, go ahead and hit the share button. <laughs> so as I close, I leave you with my favorite quote as I do every week, in this life, we get to choose, so choose to live an amazing life. See you next week.